John, um, why don't you give us a little brief introduction about yourself and InstaShop? Great. I mean, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of InstaShop, along with Ioan, actually, that's uh, another founder of InstaShop. Uh, we, we launched this five years ago. It's been a super uh, exciting journey, very turbulent. When we launched InstaShop, online groceries wasn't a big thing. So basically, we had to convince all the retailers about, you know, we had to sort of beg them to come online uh, in contrast to today. Uh, I think that's a, a very basic summary of the journey. Yes, um, it was a very innovative process at the time, and there were very few. Um, but I have to say, I started using it right from the beginning, um, and it has helped me in my uh, stay-at-home shopping experience. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so tell us, uh, Marketplace's role in promoting e-commerce to retailers. Yeah, so I, I would probably say that the role of marketplaces, and we're going to see that across the, uh, the next years, is, is absolutely fundamental to the success of retailers online. And there's a very basic component to that. Marketplaces could play a kind of neutral role that brands themselves cannot really play. And that gives the ability to users to go to a single place for multiple offerings. So marketplaces really could bring Carrefour, Almaya, Choithrams, all these players when we talk about supermarkets together. But it could also bring very different verticals from fresh food to butchery to pet shops to individual different shops together in one place. And you need that component of neutrality in order to be able to incorporate all these. It's not as easy, for example, if you have a Carrefour shop to bring other, let's say, brands uh, uh, of supermarkets on board uh, the same platform. And users want one place to go. So that's why marketplaces, I, I, I mean, I'm quite certain, but time will show, will be the, the ultimate, let's say, long-term winners. And it's a great way to geographically connect with what's around you, uh, where you may not always uh, know exactly what choices you have. So um, what are the benefits and values for retailers, you know, when partnering with marketplaces? Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, basically, uh, it's very simple. So it, it's a much more cost-effective way. The marketing, the, the acquisition of the user is done, let's say, from... Uh, the marketplaces themselves. The technology development is done from the marketplaces. The, these are entities, these are entities, I would say, yeah, that are really, really focused on building a good experience for the user, and they're in their uh, natural uh, habitat. Because these technology companies usually are very, very well equipped to handle all the complexity that comes along uh, with building an online marketplace. And usually other players offline brands that say don't have that know-how, don't have the focus that is needed to succeed online. And if you add the neutrality factor and the fact that users really want to go to one place for everything, it just, you know, the user is going to be there, so you have to be there. So you were talking about having to uh, reach out to all of these uh, supermarkets and stores in the beginning. And my favorite marketing question, which I've always shared with my team, is what's in it for me? So what was the main value or benefit for them to join InstaShop? How did you sell it? You mean the, the shops? Mm. The main, I, I think I mentioned the main benefits. Uh, the, the main benefit is the user is there. The know-how is there, and it's a much more effective uh, channel to, uh, to do business in. And of course, then the question is that you have to pick the right partner. And of course, we know which, which is the right partner in the Middle East, at least. Uh, but yeah, again, we have to leave time to prove that. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's talk about how the game is changing. Uh, E-commerce turns to fresh food and groceries during the pandemic. Were you not already doing that? As a user, I think you know we were doing that. I don't know how many years you've been using InstaShop. Yeah, so InstaShop has been doing, obviously, fresh produce and all these things for, I don't know how many users are in, are in here or online, but for at least five years now, actually, fruits and vegetables alone as a category is our biggest category of, of, of doing business. So that's uh, in contrary to the user expectation of everybody needing to squeeze their tomatoes and see if they're you know, uh, good enough. Uh, I think the game in the pandemic has, has changed quite a bit for the overall landscape, not, not for InstaShop particularly. So we're doing what we've been doing, just at larger scales. 
and we constantly improve ourselves, improve our technology, our processes, our way of working with our partners, our onboarding speed for shops. But overall, what we see, and obviously I think everyone sees, everybody wants to do groceries today. You have, uh, I, I don't want to mention particular brands, but you have online electronic shops trying to sell tomatoes as if, you know, they're an iPhone, which is just not going to work, uh, my, my humble feedback. Uh, you have food aggregators jumping into groceries as if, it, as if it's, uh, you know, uh, the same thing. The reality is that, and most of us know that, or will realize that, that groceries is an extremely complicated category. It's a category with thousands and thousands of SKUs with prices that are changing within minutes. So it's not something that, uh, you know, you, you could enter in lightly. The barriers to entry in terms of know-how are extremely high. And we're lucky enough to a certain extent to have been building that know-how across many years. Uh, talking about fresh groceries, I think the biggest uh, challenge is the quality that gets delivered at the end of the day. Whereas where you are already associated with brands that have good quality, that is a, a very big factor. So they may be coming, but they're going just as fast as what I've seen. True, true. Retention is another very critical element. So we're going to see across the next six to eight months how players that entered into this uh, segment are going to retain users. That's going to be super interesting. As consumers are very fussy. <laughs> yes. so, how can retailers and the marketplace work efficiently, collaboratively, and innovatively together to meet and exceed customers' expectations? Yes, that's, uh, again, a great question, I have to tell you, Melissa. <laughs> Okay, what I would say is that uh, choosing the right partner is very critical. What we've been seeing uh, very often now with uh, retailers is that they're jumping and collaborating with anyone and everyone. And again, from honest feedback, that could be extremely dangerous. You get distracted, you cannot focus on the right partnership, the customer experience becomes, uh, you know, uh, uncontrollable with so many processes, so many different partners. And the reality is that the focus on building a partnership also becomes diluted. So what I would suggest, trying to be as neutral as possible, put the right KPIs, try to, to choose the right partners. You know, there are KPIs, look at the user retention in six months, 12 months, so on of that platform, see the basket size, try the experience yourself and see if, if it's something that really resonates with you and it's, it has a proper UI, UX. Uh, retailers don't do that. Uh, they have their headquarters, they sign contracts, and they, onboard, uh, they, they go on board to various, let's say, platforms without even having the slightest idea. So if you want a good experience, you need a good partner. It's as simple as that.